Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we created a new battle menu class, and we started adding in methods to go ahead and hide our menus, and we started to add in js.comments so that way we get things like IntelliSense, and we'll have documentation for our code while we're working with it. Uh, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and continue working on our battle menu, and we're going to start adding in uh, player interactivity uh, by listening for keyboard input. So if you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. Alright, so to start listening for player input, what we're going to do is we're going to come to our battle scene class. And what we need to do is we need to reference the Phaser uh, keyboard uh, plugin, uh, which is built into the Phaser 3 library. And what this plugin does is it allows you to uh, create key objects and then listen for keyboard specific events. So for like when a key is pressed, uh, when it's released, uh, if it's being held and things of that nature. Uh, so this plugin, allows us to specify a key or a set of keys that we want to listen to events for, and then that way we can react to them in our code. As well as this, there's also some utility methods uh, like create cursor keys, which will go ahead and create an object with a set of predefined keys automatically for us. So then that way it automatically listens for them and we just need to check to see if they're being pressed. Um, and so this object will create uh, hotkeys for your typical like up, down, left, right, as well as your spacebar and shift on your keyboard. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new property to our uh, battle scene class, and we're just going to call this cursor keys. And the type of this is it's going to be a phaser types input, and it's going to come from our keyboard, and it's going to be cursor keys. So then what we're going to do is at the bottom of our create method, we'll go ahead and create an instance. So... We're gonna do this dot cursor keys will equal this. So we're gonna reference our phaser scene, and then we're gonna reference our input. So this is going to be our input uh, plugin manager, and then by referencing keyboard, this will reference the keyboard plugin uh, I was referring to earlier. And then we're gonna do create cursor keys. And so what this method will do, it's going to create those hot keys for the up, down, left, right, and the spacebar and shift for us automatically. So then what we get is if we reference our new property, our cursor keys, we can check for these particular keys on this object, so like down. And so what this will do is each of these is a generic key object. And that object has a bunch of methods and properties uh, that allow us to do things like to add event listeners. We can see if that key's being currently pressed, how long it was pressed for. We can see if it's being pressed with another key, so like key combination, uh, so like being pressed down with the control key and things of that nature. Uh, and so by using this utility method, we get all of that out of the box. All right, so now that we have our cursor keys, what we actually need to do is we actually need to listen to see when these were pressed. And to do that, what we want to do is we actually want to use the update method uh, on our scene. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add our update method. And so inside here, this is where we're going to check uh, if our keys are being pressed. So our update method is going to be called every frame of our game. Uh, so this is what we want to react to players actually interacting with our game. And so to do that, uh, the first thing we're going to do is, as an example, I want to check if our space key was pressed. So we're going to make a new variable. We'll do const was space key pressed. And to check that, what we'll do is we'll do phaser input dot keyboard dot just down and we'll do a reference to our space key so we're going to do our cursor keys and then we'll do space and then what we'll do is we're just going to console log was our space key pressed all right so if we go ahead and open our developer console uh what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at our new console log statement so by default uh we should see false being logged uh, every time our update method is called. And so this shows that our space key is not being pressed. But if we press the space key in our scene, you'll see now it toggles to true and then goes back to false. Likewise, if you hold the space key, it'll fire true one time and go right back to false. And so the reason for that is the just down method 
what it does is it allows us to check to see if a key has been pressed and it'll only return true one time until the player lets go of the key and they press it again. Um, so this is really good in games for if you don't want the player to go ahead and just hold the key and then react to it multiple times. Uh, you actually want them to press it multiple times for us to take multiple actions. Um, you generally want to use this method when you're using a core game loop, uh, such as our update method here, instead of using an event listener. Um, so this is different than like if we wanted to do this dot cursor keys, and we do our space key, and we do is down, if we log that, we hold the space key, you'll see now true stays true as we hold the key, and it only goes back to false once we let go. Alright, so now that we know how to listen for player input, uh, we actually need to pass that input to our battle menu uh, class, and then that way we can react to it. Uh, so what we're going to do is in our battle menu, we're going to add a new public method, and we're going to call it handle player input. So what we'll do is we'll come below our hide monster attack submenu, and we're going to add our new methods. We'll do handle player input, and we'll inspect input as an argument. And what we'll do is just do console.log the input value. And then what we're going to do is for our input, we'll go ahead and add in our type definition. So what we're going to expect is the text OK or cancel. And so what this will refer to if the player expresses the space bar, that's going to be OK, um, like the A button um, that they want to go forward. And if they hit the shift key, that's going to be the cancel. So that's like back. And so that'll be for input. All right, and just to show that our input's working, what we're going to do is we're actually going to toggle our menus here based on the input that's provided. Um, and then we'll come back and refactor this to actually tie it to when a pair, player selects a certain option. Uh, so to do that, we're going to do an if statement. We'll do if our input is equal to that cancel key, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hide our monster attack submenu, and we'll show the main battle menu. And then we'll go ahead and return early. Otherwise, if the input is equal to the OK button, then we'll go ahead and hide our main battle menu and we'll show the attack menu. All right, so then what we need to do is we actually need to call this method from our update method here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get rid of our console log and we're going to do, we'll have a check like if our space key was pressed. Then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and call on our battle menu and we'll do handle player input and we're going to pass OK. And then we're going to go ahead and return early. Uh, so then that way our player can't hit multiple keys in one update frame. So now if we press the space key, we'll see that our attack menu shows. All right, so then next what we need to do is we actually need to do our cancel key. So what we're going to do, we'll do another if statement. We'll do our phaser input dot keyboard dot just down and we'll do our cursor keys and then we'll go ahead and do our shift key so then what we'll do is we're just going to copy this code here and we'll change this from ok to cancel all right so now if we press the space key we should go to our attack menu if we press the space key again nothing should happen but if we press one of our shift keys we should go back to our main menu all right, so now that we have the basic interactivity done for our menus, we're able to toggle them. Uh, what we actually need to do is we're going to add in functionality to listen for our arrow keys. Uh, so our up, down, left, and right. And when one of these keys is pressed, we're also going to pass that to our handle player input uh, method here. So to do that, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a common uh, utility uh, object called direction. And basically what this object will do, it'll have our left, right, down, and up keys on it. And we'll also have one for none, so if no keys being pressed at this time. Um, so this will just be a nice abstraction uh, over the cursor keys and what the player is actually doing uh, from our keyboard. And then that way later on, if we ever want to add like gamepad support or the WASD keys for moving, we could also map that to our direction.
Uh, so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come into our source folder. We're going to go ahead and add a new subfolder. We're going to call this common. Uh, so this is going to be all of the common code that'll be reused across our variety of scenes. Uh, so you can imagine for our input, uh, we'd use that on our title scene uh, as well as on the world scene when we're moving our player around and in our battle scene for navigating our menus. Uh, so it's going to be reused uh, in quite a few places. So inside our common folder, what we're gonna do is make a new file. We're gonna call this direction.js. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do export const We'll do direction, and we're gonna set that equal to object.freeze. And then so inside here, we'll do left, we'll do right, we'll do our up, down, and then we're gonna do none. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy these, All right, so now we have our new uh, direction object. What we'll do is we'll come back to our battle scene, and what we'll do is below our if statements and our update method, we're gonna do a new variable. We'll do let selected direction, and we're set it equal to direction dot none. Then what we'll do is we're gonna check if our cursor keys, are, if one of our arrow keys is being pressed down. So we'll do if this cursor keys dot left is down then we'll update our value so we'll do selected direction will equal our direction dot left then what we'll do is we're just going to copy this here we'll do else we'll paste that so we have an else if so now we have right and we'll do right we'll do else if and now we'll do up and we'll do direction dot up and then we'll do else if, and now we just need to do down, and then we'll do direction dot down. And then finally, what we're gonna do is if we're gonna check if the selected direction does not equal none, then we'll go ahead and call our handle player input. So we're gonna do if selected direction does not equal our direction dot none, then we know one of our arrow keys was pressed. So we'll do this, battle menu, dot handle player input. And when you specify our input, so we'll do selected direction. All right, so real quick, if we come to our scene, if we press one of our arrow keys and hold it, you'll see now we council log which arrow key is being pressed and if it's being held down or not. All right, so in our IDE, uh, we see we have an issue uh, with our selected direction variable. And so what's happening is VS Code is inferring the type for our selected direction variable. And because we're assigned it to direction.none, what we're saying is this variable is equal to that explicit string none. And then later on, when we go to update it, the type that's being inferred is not equal uh, to the other type. And so what we need to do is we need to tell VS Code for this variable that it can be one of any of the keys on our object here. And so typically we'd wanna do that by adding our JS doc type. Um, however, because this is a custom object, uh, we need to define our own type uh, for this object. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in the JS doc types that we need to get this to work. And then we'll go ahead and talk about what we did here. Uh, so real quick, what we're going to do is in our direction.js file, we're going to do slash dash star, and then we're going to use a new annotator called enum. And we're going to do direction. And then what we're going to do is we use another new annotator and we'll do at type def and we'll do key of type of direction and then direction. So then what we'll do is back in our battle scene, we'll go ahead and add our type. So we'll do at type and for our type, we're going to reference direction. And then one last thing we need to do is we need to update our battle menu to also expect direction. So we're just gonna copy this here. Actually, we'll come to our battle menu. And what we'll do 
is just going to do or, and we're going to reference direction. And then that way we can just import it. All right, so we come back to battle scene. Now we'll see our intelligence is happy of when we're passing our values. And if we press our arrow keys, space, and shift, everything still works. All right, so what we did here is we referenced a new annotator called at enum uh, from JS Doc. So what the at enum tag does is it allows you to specify a set of values who are all of the same type. And what this means is we want to define a brand new type called direction. And this type can have these as the possible values, so left, right, up, down, and none. And so when we use at enum, what we're saying is for this particular type, these are the values that are available. And so by doing that, that's what allows us to say that this direction type here for this variable means it can be any of those values. And so now when we hover over it, we can see that selected direction could be left, right, up, down, or none. And then that's why when we pass selected direction to our handle player input method, we originally had an issue because those four strings do not match the OK and the cancel strings that we specified. So because this is all just when we're compiling our code, it's not actually going to throw any issues if we passed a different string here. So like when we didn't say that as a type, we saw that our method worked fine. So like if I change this to something like eight, what we'll see here is anytime we press one of those arrow keys, that string goes through. And so this isn't going to protect us at runtime, but what it does do is when we're writing our code, we say, hey, this isn't lining up with what we're expecting. Um, so it just improves that experience because we know JavaScript, we can have these errors at runtime and it just makes it a little bit more safe, more type safe while we're working with our code. So then what we did is we used the at type def uh, annotator. And so what this tag does is it allows you to specify your own custom types um, that you'll be using in your code. Uh, so out of the box, uh, we can use the built-in JavaScript types like objects, uh, strings, numbers, uh, anything, arrays. Uh, we get all that out of the box. If we want to use anything that's custom, you have to use this tag here at type def, and then you can specify what that type is. And so this is really good for your own custom objects if you want to document the properties. It's also good for these enums because then what we can do is we can define our type direction and then we can specify what the possible values are. And so that's what we did here. E of type of direction, what this does is it references our direction object and then key of gets a list of all the possible keys on our object, so left, right, up, and down, and then type of gets those types. And so key of type of is something we typically see in TypeScript. Uh, we won't be diving too much into TypeScript uh, in this course, uh, but the main thing to take away from this is that this will allow us to define our own custom type for an enum value, since enums don't uh, currently exist in JavaScript, um, and it allows you to use those values. And then that way, if we ever reference the type direction, we know that these are the possible values that we're expecting. All right, so one last thing we're gonna do is in our battle scene class, we're gonna go ahead and add in the type definition uh, for one of our methods here, so the create health bar here. So what we're gonna do for our JS docs is we're gonna add in our params, uh, so our X and Y values, we're expecting numbers, and then we're just gonna add a comment. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we'll say the X position to place the health bar container. And then what we'll do is we're just gonna copy that comment. We'll place that here. We'll change that to Y. And then we have a new type of tag here at returns. This, this allows us to specify the return type of our method when it's called. And so this will be included uh, in our documentation um, and in our IntelliSense uh, by adding it. So we return a phaser game objects dot container. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're gonna go ahead and continue working on our battle menu by adding in our input cursor. And so as a player provides input, we'll move that cursor around our menu. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.